everybody. Hello, this is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello everyone, this is freelance journalist Steve Marinucci welcoming you to another edition of Beatles News Briefs. On this week's show, Beatle News Briefs contributing editor Candy Leonard, the author of the book Beatleness, and myself will discuss the controversy over the Google commercial with the Beatles song Help. I'll have some Beatle news for you after. Here's the discussion with Candy Leonard and myself. Hello everyone, I'm here with Candy Leonard and we had a topic we thought we'd discuss between the two of us and uh it's been getting a lot of discussion on facebook especially it's the google commercial with help in it and you know anyone that everyone knows that this isn't a first to have beatles music in a commercial but i guess what's really what's really standing out in this is the fact that the you know, the full song is there, and it's also the Beatle recording that is there. And I know, Candy, you have some very strong feelings about this. And I'm, I purposely did not ask you what your strong feelings were because I wanted to react in real time to it. But go ahead. I'm, I mean, I, these recordings, I mean, these advertisements always do kind of get to me, and they always have. But does this one, this one bugs you a little more than than the others do right it certainly does i mean yes i mean we've all heard Beatles songs and songs other beloved songs of our youth i mean the stones notoriously with microsoft i mean david bowie did have used i believe changes in a fidelity commercial i mean this, this is nothing new um bob dylan with victoria's secret so And, of course, the Beatles with Nike, but I believe the songs are in Michael Jackson's control when that revolution, when revolution was used in the Nike ad. But I and, and, you know, we, we, you know, people were a little I mean, some people didn't mind it. Some people liked it, whatever. This to me feels like something different um, because it's Google. And Google is not a benign force in our culture. (laughs) Okay. I mean, giggle if you want, but they're not. No, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm giggling because I kind of had the same feeling. Right. I mean, when I know, heard it. here's the thing, like, you know, Nike, what, you know, like a lot of these, you know, our beloved songs that are used in commercials is a product, is a thing you can buy. Google, there's no product in that commercial. What they're selling is you. You are the product in surveillance capitalism. And that's what Google is all about. Google has pioneered um, this thing that has come to be called surveillance capitalism. And it's funny because I've been reading a lot about this lately. Mm -hmm. And so the commercial was particularly disturbing to me i um you know we've all had this feeling i'm sure um recently over the last few years where you know you see oh this thing showed up on my feed how did they know i was thinking about that oh we were just talking about that the other day and here's an ad for it right we've all had this Mm -hmm. experience and it's the word I, I believe. I mean, for me, I always found find it very creepy. I mean, I have a few really outrageous examples of this, which I won't take time to share. But these things are where it's like, how did this? How do they know this? Okay, and so that's what Google is about. Google has pioneered this, and so I think Facebook is worse. Well, I think face, Facebook, face, is, right. Facebook is much worse. Right, but don't forget, Sheryl Sandberg started at Google, then went to Facebook. So, so they're both. I mean, Amazon. I mean, all these big companies. But Google really has been, you know, in two thousand. You know, it goes back a very long time to right after nine eleven. In fact, right before nine eleven, there were, go- you know, uh, you know, Google benefited from the lack of regulation around this. It was a big frontier, you know, and there was going to be regulations put on regarding regarding privacy and different things, then 9-11 happened. And then it kind of flipped, in fact, the complete other way, where was this felt need to, you know, get more information because of the fear of terrorism. So Google benefited from that. And, you know, here's, but getting back to the Beatles. um, Okay, so, well, you know, I was sitting there making a salad, cutting vegetables, and I hear this 
really what I would call an iconic signature opening vocal of John Lennon calls my attention to the TV, of course, like, what is it, you know, and I saw it was a Google, I was horrified. And I don't understand why they would do this. Um, Obviously, the four parties approved it. And I just don't get it. Like, the Beatles are bigger than Google. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? I, I think part of it is, like, some people said on Facebook, oh, well, maybe it will introduce, you know, future, you know, more people to their music. You know what? They don't need Google to help them do that. They don't need to align with this pernicious force to help them do that. A force that um, is about undermining democracy, undermining our innermost thoughts and privacy. I mean, the, you know, the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning that Google has, um, you know, developed and continues to develop. And, um, it, it, you know, it, it's not all good, you know. And so for the Beatles to align themselves with this, it just seems, feels very off brand to me. Like, for example, recently I wrote a piece for Culture Sonar about how the Beatles had licensed, um, you know, had done licensing deals with Crayola right. uh, and with uh, Stern Pinball Machines and with Crate and Barrel. And I thought, okay, that was kind of cool and interesting because these are products, these are brands that are about fun, art, creativity, goodwill, fun, right? Google ain't that. You know, Google is about, you know, monetizing your soul, you know? And so I just don't understand why they did this. It's just, Mm -hmm. and and so, you know, and then I'm trying to think, well, you know, they all agree to it. And to me, it sort of feels like, again, I have no idea if this is true, but my sense is that they saw this as, some, again, this, you know, oh, we're going to be current, you know, Google's all the rage, like Google's the biggest thing in the world, you know, um, let's align with this, let's do this, you know, so yes, in the first instance, it's about money, and, you know, which, which you know, I don't, um, uh, uh, you know, it's fine that they want to make money. I, I don't begrudge them that, although I think at this point it's a little a little bit wacky. I mean, these these four entities have, and their heirs into God knows how long into the future, have all the money they will ever need, okay? They want more, okay, fine. Somebody wrote on Facebook, well, how can you say they're not interested in money when they said in 1964, let's write a swimming pool? I'm sorry, that calculus doesn't apply in 2019 when they are, debating whether to sell John's iconic vocal and that song to Google. It's a different ball game. I'm sorry. It's, it's, well, uh, I, 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 see, I see where you're going, but I'm not sure I go as far as you do. I will say, however, that if there's one thing that doesn't click as far as this goes, it's the Beatles – um and google because google is basically a symbol of authority well that too and the beatles were not and the beatles uh, have went uh, all through their all through their existence all through i mean the, the their original existence especially as as being um not in authority. authority but they 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 were the voice of youth it, I'm telling you, for the Beatles to align with Google is as aligned, to, to quote Jack Black, is as aligned with the man as you could possibly ever want to be. And again, like uh, if they want to align with, you know, could, you know, like, I'm not saying they have to be like hippies forever. It's it's just like it, it's just I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me in any way other than a pure money grab. And even then, they don't need the money. And they didn't think it through. I think that they are, I, I think that, I mean, again, I don't know how they make these decisions, whether they bring in consultants, whether they do market research or it's the four of them around a the table. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But I, but this decision, I believe, was profoundly misguided, really. I really do. I mean, Google is changing our culture 
in ways that are so antithetical to everything that the Beatles stand for. Now, who am I to say what they stand for? Okay, fine. Well, you know what? I'm a fan who listened to them and, had, you know, grew up with them, internalized what I be believed was a, you know, sort of a certain kind of way of being in the world, a worldview, an appreciation of music, creativity, art, be yourself, authenticity, peace, love, the whole shebang. Okay. Google is not any of that. Google is about making money and like you and I agree with you 100% that Google is seen as an authority, which, of course, kind of raises the question, then when did we make Google an authority? But, th but, that's, mm -hmm. but that's part of the problem. And, you know? and, and, even, and even more, you know, an even bigger question, why the song Help? Well, why, because that would be why? very cute. Again, I, I, I truly turned, I walked out of the room, but I think what it was was like, it was like searching for like a restaurant. In other words, it, it was almost like that the, you know, the, the sort of the, the, the ease of the efficiency of using a, a, a apps. Google. Or, uh, right. Google. Right. Which, which in some, res I mean, in, in some respects, I'm not going to argue too heavily with because, you know, I do it all the time. And of course we right, all do. We, we all do. And, and in fact, right now, right now I'm, I'm without my principal phone because it's in the, in the shop. Um, which, no, by the way, if I could put if I can put a put a plug in for Apple, they've been doing they've been doing very nicely to me, uh, for me. So, um, uh, and I've been having some phone problems, but in any event, but, you know, uh, we, we we give over well, so much to these companies. Um, we, well, yeah, I mean, you rely you rely on the uh, you rely on the, your apps. You you how many how many apps ask you to log in through Facebook? I have never done that. I've okay. never done that, and I never will do that. Okay. Well, it's I'm just saying it, it's just yeah. There, I mean, it's it's like you give your soul a part of your exactly. soul away. Exactly. And, and you know, the thing is, like the uh, you know all those little quizzes. You know, what color are you? What? Oh, animal I don't. Yeah, no, I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't well, do that stuff. Every single one of those things is 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 um draining i mean it, it, you don't you don't feel it you don't care it's fun whatever it's a trade it's a trade off but it's a trade off we never really agree to right and and so you know do i have anything to hide am i doing anything in my personal life that i don't want people to know about no but that's not the point i don't the the power of ai and machine learning combined with the amount of data that google has is truly frightening. And there are a lot of really smart people who think that this is really undermining not only our democracy, but our very sense of what it means to be a human being with a with a private soul, a private life, you know. Well, and, and that, again, gets to the question is, why are the Beatles attached to Google in the first place? You know, I mean, that. I don't, I don't what, understand. What's, what's, I mean, I, you know, again. Did Google approach them? Uh, who, who knows? You know, some some thirty year old at Google probably thought it'd be a cool ad to have a Beatles song. You know, whatever. And, and you know, and again, I'm not I'm not so um, you know hard hearted with it, so intense about this that I won't say yeah, there's something kind of cool about it. But it's really mostly not cool. And and I I really and that song in particular. You know, now again. Would you well, I, you know, I think it, when I hear that song, I think of what John was going through at the time. And it, it's not it, and it comes across, I guess, in the commercial as more of a kind of an innocent song. Of course. You know, yeah, help, right. I, help, I need somebody. But that's it's not it's anybody. Cute. Anybody who knows the song, any Beatle fan who knows the history behind that song knows that that wasn't meant to be a cute help. I need somebody song. There was some real. I mean, John was speaking. Right. Art. Even if you don't know all that, even if you're my five-year-old grandson who knows that song, right, mm. it's still wrong because it, it's just this, this juxtaposition of just a, a clash of sensibilities, a clash of values, a clash of um, – time and anachronism i don't know there's just so much disturbing about it I'm, I'm I, th like, I think i think we see it on different levels i think you see it from a i guess sort of a, a psychological level if i'm interpreting what you're saying uh, no 
it, I would say I see it more of almost a political way, really. Polit- All right, political level. Okay. See, and I see it from more of a a Beatle fan level of. Well, I'm saying, well, yes, of course. What, the, what the hell? What the hell is you know is Google doing with this song and trying to make something instant out of it when in fact it was never meant. It wasn't that way in the first place. Yeah, but the Beatles, but 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 Paul and Ringo and Yoko and Olivia gave it to them to do right. that. They gave them permission to do that. That's right. the thing right. that's so frankly appalling about this. Okay. okay. Do you? I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I don't think we disagree on that part of it. I mean, I'm, do you think I, that I, Don I, would be okay with this? No fucking way. Well, I'm sorry. I, mean, I just don't see it. I mean, back remember back when 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 they first started doing this, people were asking whether John would have done this. Right, but again, I, I yes, but we've kind of got inured to it over the you know the years because so many of our so, you know songs that we love, whether it's the Who or the Stones or the Beatles, we've heard them in ads. But I, I really do think though that the alignment with Google is is yet an is a whole other entity it's a whole other thing because of google's size and power and the and 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 the um you know what i suppose one could argue that it's a very uh, uh appropriate alignment didn't didn't um didn't the stones i'm not trying to do a what about thing yeah. but didn't the stones use uh, start me up with apple oh yeah the stones have, have so lots of have done lots of yes yes absolutely mm-hmm. but again even there there's a product the product is the computer okay google what is the product there what is the product there help me okay help um what's going to help you google get this new app give mm-hmm. us your information you know every apostrophe every exclamation point every question mark they, and again, this I, I am not, I mean, I'm very, I, I mean, I sound sort of worked up about this because I am as a Beatle fan, but, um, you know, I read a lot about this and I, you know, I know a lot about AI. I'm not an expert by any means, but this is something that interests me a lot. And I read a lot about this. And there's this book called um, Surveillance Capitalism um, by a Harvard Business School um, professor emeritus and who's written a number of books about the impact of um technology and, and mm-hmm. digital life and um it's really disturbing i mean google is not a, you know like yes i mean i i get free email i can search i can you know this is somehow we've made a deal with them but what is it, it's really talk, a talk, deal you know talk a little bit about the book though about the surveillance capitalism book just give a a rough idea of what that well, the idea is that the google realized at some point after 9 11 i guess in 2001 that there was all this what they at first thought was just like exhaust fumes of data that they were getting and then they realized that it was saleable so they so all this stuff is being sold it's like a futures market for behavioral change you know mm-hmm. it's like and it it's it's complicated stuff i would actually i hope that this woman who wrote this book will write a um, a, a more popular version because it's it's a very long dense book and I'm you know kind of still learning it myself but it's something that I'm very interested in and, and have because I think all of us in our daily lives we interact with these big companies I know I just feel sold bought all the time it's tedious I'm sick of it always and then these weird moments where you see an ad for something you talked about three hours before. We all had these experiences with, um, you know, seeing an ad show up in our Facebook feed uh, a few hours later after having discussed something, or or you're thinking about maybe buying something, but you haven't really looked into it yet, and suddenly there's an ad for the thing. We've all had this experience, right? I believe the word to describe this is creepy, right? I, but I had an experience, which I will share um, about this, which, which to me really, uh, you know, made this very, this is something I think about a lot. Um, and this experience I had recently, so I was walking down the street with a friend, this was shortly after the Michael Jackson documentary aired. And we were talking about this idea of, you know, can you separate uh, the, art, the art from the artist when you find out that they've done things that you disapprove of or that are illegal or horrible or harmful to other people. So we're talking about Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. So I mentioned that I, um, after having read Mackenzie Phillips' book, 
few years ago. I mm-hmm. I don't hear the mamas and the papas the same way because of how she was treated, right? Right. And and you know, so we're talking about this. Okay, I have not so. Um, little, just a little aside here. So because I have a Beatleness Facebook page, I get sort of things from Facebook about like promote your page and all this kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So after, so I mentioned this thing about Mackenzie Phillips and then I am not kidding about five hours later, I get an email to my Beatleness email and the from is the name Mackenzie Phillips. And it's about boost your ad, blah, 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 blah. Boost your face, you know, boost your page, you know. Oh, oh yeah, I know. I know those. In other words, it was like, it was just like this kind of, it was almost like the from was like some X variable that something gets popped in there, right? And it was, I'm telling you, it really freaked me out and it disturbed me. And, you know, we've all had experiences like this, right? And we take them in stride. We think they're funny. We think they're benign. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, we have, I suppose we have a choice how upset we're going to, each person wants to get upset about this, but to me, but it's very much on a front burner for me because I feel that it really diminishes the quality of my life. It makes me suspicious. It makes me, um, I, I I don't like it. Okay, so let me let me just say that Facebook. Yeah. I, I from my experience, and this is not just with music. Facebook uses AI to get you to promote certain posts that you make that right. they that they feel will they they can generate money off of you because they say that if you uh, these posts are similar to posts that have gotten really right, good response exactly. and right. if you if you promote them and give them twenty dollars or whatever it is they'll they'll send it out to um a, you know a, more people which bothers me a little bit because why are they why aren't they sending it out anyway but right. in any event that's, but that's, that's what funny. that's what that that's what that's about they're using ai to to promote to right. to make money off of you Right. Well, that, that's what this is all about. Facebook mm-hmm. does it. Google does it. They all do it. I mean, I remember, you know, I was a very, I, I don't subscribe to Netflix now, um, funnily enough, but back in the early 2000s, I was an early adopter of Facebook, uh, of uh, Netflix when you had the, the red envelopes, you know. And oh, I, it yes. was my first encounter with, uh, you know, machine learning where it says, oh, you might like this, you know, oh, you like that, you might like this. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. But you know what? It's not really that cool <laughs> because you know the our information is being sold uh that you know everywhere all the time in and and it's not just like you know your address and your phone number and your zip code it's it's who you are what you like what you don't like where what whether you the, one of the examples she uses is like the difference between saying I'll meet you later and I'll meet you at 645 identifies you as a certain kind of person. Now I'm that maybe they're wrong. Okay. But when you talk, when you think, when you, with this quantity of data, it's mostly right. <laughs> you, so, you just, you just, ta- you just put a target on the whole thing in that the Beatles by aligning themselves with Google are, are promoting this whole you know, data. Uh, exactly, exactly. It, surveillance capitalism. They are aligning themselves with it. surveillance capitalism, which is a pernicious force that is undermining democracy. I don't and, think that's what the Beatles are about. I'm sorry, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that's what they're about. And it's and it's also kind of. I mean, when you think about it that way, it's also. You know, I can't speak for. I can't speak about Ringo. I can't speak about. George, although it seems weird that George would align himself with that. Paul, Paul's a very worldly kind of guy, you know, but Yoko and Yoko and John, it just does not seem. John would not go for this. I, I'm sure. I, I, I mean, I, who knows? But the, the, the John Lennon that I would like to think I know, okay, mm-hmm. would not go for this. Yeah. He would recognize what's going on here with right. 
companies and right. how they are um, draining, out, you know, how they are profiting off our lives, off our yeah. free interests, our I lifestyles, have, I, our I, goals, our tastes. You I know? have to, I have to, I have to agree with you at, at that point because, yeah, it it doesn't seem to and again you know it's just off brand it's just i mean brand well we don't i mean we don't know what you know what they're what they're thinking these days we're not like you said we're not in on the meetings but and we don't know who's who's making the corporate decisions but it it's i think it's probably more than the brain trust because yeah it just doesn't seem to what do you mean more than the brain trust well i mean obviously if it was it was uh, um, the ideas are have to be coming from outside the four. Uh, I mean, obviously they are the ones. You know, as we've been we've been told that the four make the decision. You know, right. so somebody's to- doing licensing. They have they, so they probably have a licensing division, and whoever that person is. Yeah, and they, they, I mean, when I did the interview, when I wrote that piece about the uh, Crate and Barrel and Crayola and the pinball. Um, you know, I talked to these people about it and, and they had, you know, the, the, the sense that I got was this sort of, you know, like, app, you know, they were approached like Apple has a Beatles Incorporated has a licensing person who either right. sues or responds to the <laughs> trillions and trillions and trillions of requests that they get. And they truly probably are in the trillions. OK, but this is the holy grail of marketing, of, of licensing. Right. This is the holy grail. The pinball guy thought so. The, the Crayola, you know, there was like, what, what better to, you know, like what a gift to a product or a business to have the Beatles um, sprinkle that magic dust on you and to give themselves to you in that way. Well, like Mad Men, okay, when they, when, when they allowed, when they sold, it was like $275,000, I think, mm-hmm. I, um, to use Tomorrow Never Knows on Mad Men. You know, they're very judicious. They think about what they're doing. This, to me, was a money grab. It's off-brand, and it was not well thought out. So whoever either brought this to them or, you know, the the guy who handles the licensing, hey, Google wants to blah, blah, blah. I mean, what were they thinking? Oh, oh, that's a way for us to stay current? I'm sorry. You know what? They don't need Google. Why? Why then were you okay with the pinball machine and the and the uh, crate and barrel? Because I mean, because they are um, products that I don't mind. The, and I don't mind people making money on this. My issue is that it should be consistent with who the Beatles are. It, I mean, my concern is for the future of, about this. Okay, so crate and barrel. Um, was putting out these, you know, these iconic images, you know, some of the big images that we all know that we've seen a trillion times framed, you know, selling for 600 bucks a piece. OK, put the Beatles on your wall with, you know, a millennial in Brooklyn or a, a boomer in Cambridge, whoever, you know, they're pricey. But it was it was presenting the Beatles as art in these iconic images. It's decoration. OK, it's kind of, you know, there's something offensive about that and i would say this and crayola adult uh, all ages coloring books what could be more beetleish than that okay I, heard, I, I didn't see the the prices on them but somebody meant somebody commented that the that the books were very expensive which books? I the crayola the coloring I, book i don't know it was like 15 bucks or something maybe the, oh, okay it was that expensive but again, like as an association, as a brand alignment, Crayola and the Beatles, yeah, that kind of works. It's about right. chill, you know, creativity, childhood, fun, you know, that color, that all works. Remember, they made they they got into it with Lionel. Uh, That's right. right. You know, I, I I I mean, I had problems with them doing the pinball machines because I, for one, the the prices were incredible i mean they were outrageous well, they were meant i mean there was there were they made a small number for collectors and then the, the largest number they only produced 1964 of them the right. largest number were for bars and i get what was the new word the uh, barcades the guy when i interviewed him i learned the word barcade in other words they were for pubs and bars and things like that i don't know i mean i don't i think it's nice that the beatles are um 
presented in the culture in these ways, like these three things, again, this is my opinion, like those didn't bother me because it was consistent with the pinball machines. Yes, they were expensive, it's true, but a pinball machine, it, first of all, it's retro, so it, it, it has that aspect, but it, it's about fun. It's about playfulness. It's about leisure. It's mm-hmm. about it's about you be you, you know, it's not about, it's not about we take you, which is what Google is. Okay. I mean, All right. I mean, I, I think, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I get, I get your point. I get your, I get your point. Um, I mean, I, I probably sound a little crazy about this. I'm really, you know, the more I think about it, the more upset I get, frankly. Mm-hmm. Well, I could, I can tell. I mean, I just don't understand it. Like, I, I, I don't know what was driving this. I mean, part of it, you know, like, I, I know that it's very important for Paul, especially to be current and be relevant and all this, but like, they don't need Google. They're, they're the Beatles. They don't need Google. And, and you know, Google, in other words, there's something, I mean, to say selling out, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know what, I had to really describe it. It just seems wrong to me. I don't understand the purpose. And if it was just, I mean, I'm sure that it was an enormous amount of money, I'm, I'm guessing, because Google, of course, has infinite amounts of money because, well, they're Google. Um, do the Beatles heirs really need more money? I mean, like, we're, like, I, I don't know. There's just a lot about this that is just a kind of a little creepy to me. Okay. All right. I'm curious well, to know what other people think. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, if, if this discussion has provoked you, uh, uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, send us a, a, a note at BeatlesNewsDesk at gmail.com and, and, or, or write to us on uh, YouTube. And who knows? We may read you and then comment and uh we'll 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 take it from there so I mean, it's really only because of my love for the beatles that i am this upset because i feel like it was a really bad decision well maybe you you may not be alone we'll find out what do you think that's going to do to their legacy well i i don't know that it's gonna you know hurt their legacy but but the the thing i think what the four principles there don't understand is that they don't need to worry about their legacy anymore so if they feel that aligning with google will somehow uh, elevate them or broaden their exposure to new audiences i i really think they need to let go of that they are the beatles it's they you know it's not it, it's not going to, uh, it, they don't need this. So, you know, I mean, you know, who, I, I don't know how long this campaign will last or how these commercials, how long these commercials will run. Hopefully not very long because frankly, every, you know, when it comes on, I, I just, it just makes me want to cry. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as, as far as legacy, I don't know. It may have no impact whatsoever. Um, you know, because again, the people who are going to keep the Beatles alive into the future are younger, are, you know, digital natives, and maybe they don't have the issues with this that, that I have. I, I think the, I think the legacy was, was bent with the first commercial. I think that, I think that whole, that idea is not, I don't think it's going to have as much effect as you do. But I, I mean, because I, I think the effect has already been there. You mean like with the Nike Revolution commercial? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think all that's. I think it started then. I don't think it's. Well, I don't yes, think it's, and well, I, I, as I said before, I mean, I think we've all gotten used to that. But I think that the alignment with Google, it's not like, oh, here's a product. Google is is a um, is a force. Google is 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 almost like a quasi governmental. Uh, entity you know Mm -hmm. there's a commercial running now that uses here comes the sun and i can't remember even what the product is and it's just the instrumental it's the like the opening guitar and i believe it's the recording although i wouldn't swear to that but again that's not as offensive uh because it's not uh, you know that vocal that powerful vocal right to be used you know and also, there's a there's at least there's a product there. If you're going to use help to sell a product, well, okay, maybe you know. But I mean, so I mean, I've gotten used to the whole idea of these songs being used in commercials. But but the alignment with Google is a whole, just feels like a whole other thing. Thank you, Candy.
And now... And now here's some news. The BBC reported April 8th that a short section of footage of the Beatles from Top of the Pops from 1966 thought to have been lost forever has been found in Mexico. A missing episode of Top of the Pops from 1969 featuring an early cut of the Beatles video uh, something was also discovered. The 11 second silent clip from 1966 shows the Beatles miming to paperback writer. The story claims it to be the Beatles' only appearance on Top of the Pops, but a search that we did of YouTube found a very poor quality silent clip from March 25, 1964 with the group performing Can't Buy Me Love. The new clip will be screened uh, on the BBC this month. The latest Billboard 200 dated April 6 shows the Beatles' one album at 155 up from 166 the previous week and Abbey Road one position below it at 156 up from 158 the previous week. And in the UK, the latest official charts 100 album chart shows Beatles 1 at 85 up to from last week. We got to see the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus in the theater this past week during its very limited engagement. The film looked a little fuzzy in spots, but boy, it sure sounded great especially in the segments with John and Yoko, The Who, Taj Mahal, and The Stones. It's funny that The Who's performance has always been thought of as probably the best, and for a lot of people it it was, but The Stones sure sounded good, and so did John and Yoko. The, The new mix, the new sound mix that they put in for the theater segment really did John and Yoko justice, and I do mean Yoko, too, because she sounded great. That jam with the fiddler player was just really powerful really powerful the theater version also had a new interview with pete townsend at the beginning but did not show the outtake that we read about uh, in reports before the theater engagement so we're guessing that's eventually going to be on the disc re-release hopefully i think everybody knows that yoko ono and her pre-art life was an actress, but here's something you may not know, thanks to our friend Jeff S. Levy, who shared a picture on Facebook showing Yoko Ono in a 1961 photo when she was employed by Macy's department store in New York to teach Japanese arts, and in the picture she was teaching young children origami, the art of paper folding. Very interesting. New release alert, uh, Paul McCartney's Bruce McMouth's TV show, which was in the Red Rose Speedway Deluxe Box is now available through iTunes. And the Professor Longhair Live on the Queen Mary LP, which is another Paul project, is on Amazon and iTunes. You can find links for both on our That's What I Want Beatle page. And back in history, this this week is the 55th anniversary of that incredible week in April in 1964 when the Beatles occupied the top five positions of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. In all, they had 12 positions on the U.S. chart that week. Albums released this week on April 10, 1964. Capitol released the Beatles' second album. And in case you didn't see it, we want to point you to Billboard.com where we published a story a couple of days ago about George Harrison and a letter he wrote to President Nixon. And thanks to Chip Mattinger, of Leninology for the help with that story. That's it for now. You can catch our shows on fab4radio.com, beatlesarama.com, and also on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and wherever you get your podcasts. Please join our Beatles News and Information page on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world, and check out our That's What I Want Beatles store page on Facebook for gift ideas for yourself or for your favorite people. And it's there you can also find links for my book, Meet a Monkey, Davy Jones. It's an e-book. It's a very cheap e-book. And you can also find Candy Leonard's Beatleness, which is an excellent book. And we also invite you to join our Beatles Toppermost of the Poppermost message board at abbeyroad.proboards.com. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe if you don't already so you can get our shows when when they appear. We'll be looking for you next time, and until then, this is Steve Marinucci saying... Be seeing you!
keep that one. Market fab.